Hey everyone, welcome to the second video where we're introducing phobias, OCD and depression. And in this session, we take a look at how research methods can be embedded in this part of the specification and your exam. So in your exam, you may come across research methods questions that revolve around OCD, phobias or depression. So as well as revising these three clinical conditions, you are also expected to embed some research methods into your revision as well. So for example, you should be able to draw graphs, interpret some data, look at data and graphs and suggest trends, and you should be able to distinguish between qualitative and quantitative data to name but a few skills. So let's put one of them skills to the test. Now for this task, you've got a table of data on the screen and your job is to outline what the data in the table shows us about different ways of treating depression. Now, a question like this requires you to really interpret the data accurately and look for some patterns and trends. So pause the video for five minutes while you allow yourself enough time to look at this very carefully. So let's see how you got on with that. And here's some possible trends that you may have spotted and give yourself a tick if you did. So this data shows that patients taking new antidepressants are less likely to relapse within a year of stopping the medication. So we've got two things in the answer which make it good. We've got an accurate interpretation of the data, but we've also said what this data suggests, avoiding the temptation to just regurgitate the data. We've also noted that patients who are taking older antidepressants were less likely to require additional treatment, again, suggesting that the older antidepressants were more effective on their own. Another skill is to use available data to draw your own graphs. Take care in these types of questions to choose the right type of graph and you can tell this from the type of data and the study that you're dealing with. So for this next task, use the data in this table to draw a bar chart that shows the percentage of people who relapse within one year of stop medication. So again, a question like this takes care when you're looking at the data and um, try and bear in mind what a good graph should look like. So pause the video for five minutes while you sketch your graph. So here's an example of what your bar chart could look like. So in a question like this, an examiner would be looking for an operationalized title. So you can see at the top, we've got an IV and a DV in there. The gaps in the bars, and that's what makes it a bar chart. An axis labelled uh, horizontally and vertically. Accurate data in the graph. So all of those present, there's no reason why you wouldn't get full marks for this question. So let's move on to a different skill now. And this time you'll have a table of data to draw conclusions from. So a researcher investigated the sample of men and women who've been diagnosed with OCD. The researcher asked them to disclose the type of compulsive behaviours that they often demonstrate. Using the results from the study, what conclusions can you draw about gender and OCD? So do make sure that you draw the conclusions and avoid merely regurgitating the data in the table. Pause the video for five minutes while you analyse the data and draw your conclusions. So here's some suggested answers that you may have got. So the data shows that men are more likely to demonstrate compulsive checking behaviours and compulsive turning on or off of plugs. Women are more likely to demonstrate compulsive washing of hands. And this tells us also that there's no clear gender differences in compulsive cleaning. So that would be the conclusion drawn. For the final task in this session, let's turn our attention to correlations, another method used to gather data by psychologists. So for this task, use the results on the graph coming up to explain what type of relationship there is between the two co-variables. Try and determine whether the relationship is positive or negative and see if you can put into words the type of relationship that is displayed on the graph. Here's the graph on your screen now. So pause the video for a couple of minutes while you try and answer those questions. And from the graph, we can tell that there's a positive relationship. And that means that the more negative thoughts about the self that someone reports in one day, 
the higher the score on the depression survey.